Hi, my name is David Daniels from Radon Specialists of Wisconsin, and I'm here to talk about what a proper radon system should look like and how they function. Essentially, when we can, the best way to install a radon system is through the garage and roof when you can do that. Um, if you can't, uh, if the garage is detached or there's just no way to go to the garage, then typically it's going to be an outside system. Um, more modern homes have gravel under the slab, drain tile, which allows us to put the system pretty much anywhere in the basement. So we actually core a hole through the slab and that's what allows us to get through the garage and roof. So we're not dependent on where the sump pump pit is, which is what a lot of people think is where the system's supposed to go. And that's just not simply the case. Um, so if you look at the display here, if you can imagine down here, um, this would be the slab in the basement and then we actually core a hole through the slab. Underneath the slab you would have gravel and drain tile, uh, interior drain tile on homes built in the mid to late 60s or 70s on, so from the mid to late 70s on. And then the pipe would be inserted, that gets sealed, and then the pipe would go up along the foundation wall, and then these would be like your floor joists in the basement, and then the, the what's called a rim joist, which is on the outside of your deck of your home, um, which is the, what the first floor is. Um, you can go through the rim joist to get into the garage. And when you look at a radon system, just for proper function, when it's running, this is what's called a U-tube manometer. It's a simple vacuum indicator. And once the vacuum starts, once the fan starts, whatever side is plugged into the PVC pipe, in this case is this, this side of the manometer, it's going to show a vacuum draw. It doesn't measure radon, some people mistake that for that, but this is a vacuum indicator. So as the system's running, it's showing right here, that's about half an inch resistance, which is really good. In a real home situation, half inch to an inch is perfect resistance. So that's basically kind of how the YouTube looks as it's running. And um, this, what I'm going to do is turn the display around real quick. Once we go through that rim joist to get into the garage that I showed earlier, this is what it looks like in the garage. Again, this is just a short display. So this would be your slab in the garage. The pipe would come out above the slab, so we're not touching the slab in the garage. And then this is called a firewall. This is extremely important. Unfortunately, a lot of companies will tell you you don't need this, that you can wrap non-combustible material around the pipe and caulk it. And that'd be true if it was a metal pipe. Because it's not a metal pipe, because it's plastic, PVC, which is combustible, this pipe would literally melt in a fire in five to 10 minutes. And if that melts, you're gonna have a gaping hole here through your firewall where smoke and fire can rush right in to that dried wood, your, room, your, your, your floor joist and your flooring, and you would not wanna have that situation at all. So this fire collar, what it does basically is collapse the hole in a fire and fills it in with fire retardant material. And so that fire collar can literally save your house and or life if there was a fire in the garage. So that has to be put on, that's fire code. Then if you have a ceiling where the firewall stops at the ceiling and it's all open joists and, or, or trusses on top, you have to put a fire collar on the ceiling also. So again, they both do the same thing. So this is basically what the garage part would look like. Then if I turn the display back, this is what the garage portion would look like. Typically your radon fan, when you go through the garage and roof, your fan's up in the attic space. And then the pipe's gonna go through the roof and then through the shingles. Uh, you'll have a light for serviceability, that's code. And so it's very simple. You try to make a straight run as possible. This fan has to be right above the pipe as it penetrates through the roof. Um, and then you want to brace this up properly. And you have to pitch the pipe from the fan down to the suction point down in the basement. And you have to pitch it down so there'll be condensation. This is a cozy collar flashing. When you have steep roofs or winter applications, this is a steel frame dipped in rubber. It has three seals on it. And if you know how to install them properly, then this can actually uh, help us do systems all year round. I have one on my house, it has been on there for 15 years, it's been never failed once. And then finally, um, if you turn the display again, if you can see it, this is what the pipe would look like going through the roof. 
we try to wrap the shingles around the flashing when we can. Sometimes you can't, depending on what kind of flashing or kind of uh, shingles they have. But that's essentially what it looks like on the outside of the home when you route a system through the garage and roof. It looks like a plumbing vent. It's just that it'd be out the back of the garage roof um, instead of on the main house. So when you drive around your neighborhood and you see plumbing vents going through garage roofs, that's probably a radon system. And then you'll start noticing how many radon systems are in your neighborhood. Because just about every neighborhood in northeast Wisconsin has pipes like this going through roofs. Um, so that's basically it for an inside system. When we can't go through the garage and roof, again we call it an outside system, that's when you would have the piping like this. Now, the main part of a radon system is that the fan has to be in unlivable space. So that's either outside the home or up in the attic space like we showed earlier. The vent pipe has to be minimum 10 feet off the ground. So if you go through the back of a garage roof, you're gonna meet that pretty easily. And if we have to run any horizontal piping, we can do that in the garage attic where you wouldn't see it. If it's an outside system, typically you're gonna run the pipe straight up, hopefully next to a downspout. Um, if, if we are um, near windows and things like that, we have to be two feet above the windows. Uh, if you're by a soffit, you'd have to run the pipe up and around the soffit and have the pipe go up. But if you can go up a gable end, then that would be a, the best scenario on an outside system. With the electrical, you have to have a liquid tight box, liquid tight conduit, liquid tight connectors, all going into the fan. And it has switch has to be on outside by the fan. Again, that's electrical code. Um, I've heard some companies telling customers to get an outlet ready for them so they can plug the fan in outside. That's against code. You cannot plug a fan in with a cord. It has to be hardwired and inside conduit. Um, some cities require permits for it also, which is, again, you have to use a licensed electrician for that. But then you want to support the pipe properly with what's called uh, the mineralic clamps. These are rust proof clamps. So this pipe is sturdy. I can move the whole display because of how these clamps are going to hold the pipe on. That way, once you put it on, it's pretty much a permanent fixture of the house, no matter which way you go with the system. They all start in the basement, typically through the slab, sometimes off the pit on older houses, but typically through the slab, and then either, again, through the garage and roof or to the outside. And any questions, you can Google us. Just type in Radon Specialist of Wisconsin. We should pop right up. And uh, we're always here to answer questions and help you out. And that's basically what radon systems look like, how they should be installed, and how they function.